Hello and welcome my fellow players to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin and you're listening to another Monday Deck Tech. Today for our Deck Tech, we're going to be going over Rin and Sari Inseparable, the dog cat commander from M21. Probably the most exciting commander for me personally because I love dogs. And uh, here is my dog to just symbolize how much I love dogs. He is the cutest thing in the entire world. So this deck is dedicated to him. His name is Momo. Before we begin, please remember to like and subscribe. We appreciate everybody who has subscribed and we invite you to join us as we continue to grow. Another reminder that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by Game Grid Lehigh. If you're in the Utah County area, please check them out. They have an amazing staff, awesome card selection, tons of D&D gear, board games, accessories, uh, all sorts of stuff. So please check them out. All right, without further ado... Rin and Sari Inseparable is one red, green, white for a 4-4 legendary creature dog cat. He reads, whenever you cast a dog spell, create a 1-1 green cat creature token. Whenever you cast a cat spell, create a 1-1 white dog creature token. And for Naya and Tap, Rin and Sari Inseparable deals damage to any target equal to the number of dogs you control. You gain life equal to the number of cats you control. So right off the bat, obviously we're going to be going for a twin tribal deck. We're going to be trying to have more dogs and cats in the deck than anything else. In this deck, I have put more cats than dogs. Not because I believe that getting life is better, but the more you cast cats, the more dogs you get. And it, it the cats generally tended to be a lot better than the dogs, which is a shame. Hopefully in the future we'll get better dogs. And I can switch this deck up. But, alright, so the plan that we're going to have with Vryn and Sari, we want to have a tribal deck of dogs and cats. We want to have cards that benefit tribes, pump spells, things like that to go aggro. But Vryn and Sari on himself has a way of dealing damage to the number of dogs we control and gaining life to the number of cats we control. So, we want to be able to use that to the best of our ability. And honestly, the more dogs we have, the better it is, because damage is much more important than gaining life. Let's go ahead and begin with our cats. So first up, we've got Adorn Pouncer. For one and a white, we've got a 1-1 one, one double strike cat with external eyes. Alms Collector, three and a white for a 3-4 creature cat cleric with flash. And if an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw one card. Brimaz, King of Oreskos, is one white white for a 3-4 legendary creature cat soldier with vigilance. Whenever he attacks, put a 1-1 white cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield attacking. And whenever he blocks, put a 1-1 white cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield blocking that creature. Feline Sovereign from N21 is 2 and a green for a 2-3. Other cats you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have protection from dogs. Whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Fleece Main Lion for green and white, we have a 3-3 cat with Monstrosity 1 for 3 white green. As long as Fleece Main Lion is monstrous, it has Hexproof and Indestructible. Hungry Lynx, 1 and a green for a 2-2. Cats you control are protection from rats. At the beginning of your M step, target opponent creates a 1-1 black rat creature token with death touch. And whenever a rat dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each cat you control. Kahira, the Orphan Guard, for one green-white hybrid, green-white hybrid, we have a 3-2 legendary creature cat beast with companion, but we're going to ignore that. He has vigilance, and each other creature control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one, and vigilance. So I really only care about it, giving it to our cats. But he is also a cat himself. King of the Pride is two and a white for a 2-1 that reads other cats you control get plus two, plus one. Leonin Relic Warder is white white for a 2-2 cat cleric. When he enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment, and when he leaves, you return that exile card back to the battlefield. Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, is one green white for a 3-2 cat warrior. With first strike, whenever he attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat, and as long as Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, is tapped, no more than one creature can attack you each combat. A super, super good card in this deck because we really want to be going out aggro and swinging and we want to make sure that we don't get killed on the crackback. Oresco's Explorer is one and a white for a 2-2 cat scout. When he enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X playing cards where X is the number of players who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Pride Sovereign is two and a green for a 2-2. Pride Sovereign gets plus one plus one for each other cat you control and you can tap him for one white and exert him to create two 1-1 one, one cat creature tokens with lifelink. Prowling Sepapard is one green green for a 4-3 cat snake. It can't be countered and creature spells you control can't be countered. Kazali Pride Mage is green white for a 2-2 creature cat wizard with exalted and for one generic you can sacrifice him and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Kazali Slingers is four and a green for a 3-5 creature cat worry with reach and whenever it or another cat enters the battlefield under your control you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. 
Regal Caracal is 3 white white for a 3-3 three, three cat. Other cats you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have lifelink. And whenever it enters the battlefield, create 2 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. And then white main line is 1 and a white for a 2-2 two, two creature cat with flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So that can save you in a pinch if somebody's trying to remove your commander because uh, we want, want Word and Sari to stick around. So that's not all the cats, but those are the ones that I feel are the most important. There's other cats, just normal one ones and, and generic ones that are in this deck. But let's go ahead and move on to the hounds or the dogs because Wizards has just altered all hounds to become dogs, which is fantastic. So we have Anok Bonkin for one and a white, a two one with Outlast. And each other creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has first strike. Anok Guide for one and a green, we have a one one. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on Anok Guide or search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, shuffle your library and put that card on top. Anok Survivalist is one and a green for a two one with Megamorph. And when Anok Survivalist is turned face up, destroy a target artifact or enchantment opponent controls. Cather's Companion is two and a white for a three one. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, Cather's Companion gains indestructible until end of turn. Elven Warhounds for three and a green. We have a two two. If Elven Warhounds is blocked by any creature, put that creature on top of its owner's library. Hound of Grizzlebrand is 2 red red for a 2-2 two two with double strike and undying. Mongrel Pack is 3 in a green for a 4-1. When Mongrel Pack is put into a graveyard from play during combat, put 4 hound creature tokens into play. Treat these tokens as 1-1 one, one green creatures. Moss Dog is 1 green for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Moss Dog becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Moss Dog. Pack Leader is 1 in a white for a 2-2. Two, two. Other dogs you control get plus 1 plus 1. And whether Pack Leader attacks prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Resolute Watchdog is 1 white for a 1-3 with Defender. And for 1 generic you can sacrifice him and target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Two-Headed Cerberus is 1 red red for a 1-2 with Double Strike. War Clamp Mastiff is 1 white for a 1-1 one, one First Strike Hound. And lastly we've got 2 in a red for a 2-2 two, two Creature Dog with Mountain Walk. So now we've gone through the cats and the dogs, let's talk about how we're going to win with our cats and dogs. Since we're going to be creating a lot of tokens every time we cast a cat and a dog, we have Anointed Procession, which is 3 and a white for an enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. And we also have Parallel Lives, which is the green version of Anointed Procession. Now both of these cards are upwards of $25, so if you have one in your collection to put in this deck, great. If not, that's okay. So let's talk about our pump effects. How are we gonna pump up our creatures to make them big, swole, and very threatening? We have Beastmaster Ascension, which is two in green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, you may put a quest counter on Beastmaster Ascension. As long as Beastmaster Ascension has seven or more quest counters on it, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. Catharist Crusade is three white, white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So we're gonna have a lot of creatures coming into the battlefield. So we're gonna have a lot of ways of powering through. Titanic Ultimatum is red, red, green, 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 white, white for a sorcery until end of turn, creatures you control get plus five, plus five and gain first strike, lifelink, and trample. Lastly, we've got Finale of Devastation for green, green, X, search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So we want to be able to use Finale of Devastation when we can get to that where X is equal to 10 and just win with all of our cats and dogs. So pretty generic for a tribal deck to try to win through combat. We can also use Rin and Seri to deal some extra damage, but there are two cards in here that I have found that I didn't actually know about that may help you win very, very quickly. There are two enchantments. The first one is Bedlam for two red red. It's an enchantment. Creatures can't block. And then we have War Cadence for two in red. We've got an enchantment for red and X. This turn creatures can't block unless their controller pays X for each blocking creature he or she controls. So both of these are going to make it very difficult or impossible for our opponents to block. And if we have pump effects and just a ton of cats and dogs, we can swing out, do a lot of damage. And if we need to, we can use Rin and Seri's ability to deal the rest of the damage. So real quick, let's go ahead and go through the mana ramp in this deck. We have Arcane Signet, Boros Signet, Gruel Signet. We've got a Herald's Horn, a Selesnya Signet. Soul Ring, Circuitous Root, Explosive Vegetation, Kadama's Reach, and a Smothering Tithe. Those are going to be the ways that we're going to be able to ramp. We also have included in this deck Cryptolithrite since we're going to be creating a lot of creatures, a lot of cats and dogs, so we can use those for mana. As far as our card draw goes, 
I'm gonna include Harold's Horn in this category as well, because Harold's Horn is just that good. We also have Shamanic Revelation, which is three green green for a sorcery, draw a card for each creature you control, and you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. Return of the Wild Speaker for four and a green. We have a instant choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. We have Skull Clamp, which is one generic for an equipment, Equip for one, equipped creature gets plus one, minus one, and whenever a equipped creature dies, draw two cards. Beast Whisperer is one of our only non-dog cat creatures in this deck. It's two green green for a two three creature elf druid. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. I've also included near Camaraderie, which is four green white for a sorcery. You gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures you control, and your creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And then finally our interaction slash removal. We've got Wings of Abandon, which is one and a white for a sorcery exiled target creature you don't control. For each creature exiled this way, its controller searches their library for a basic clan card. Those players put those cards onto the battlefield tap and then shuffle their library. You can overload it for four white white. We have uh, one board wipe in here, Wrath of God, two white white for destroy all creatures. We really don't want to be using board wipes since we're a tribal deck, but in a pinch, we probably might need it. Beast Within is two and a green for a instant destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a three three green beast creature token. Path to Exile, one white for an instant exile target creature. Its controller may search his library for a basic land and put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Boros Charm is one red and one white for an instant. Choose one, it deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Permanents you control gain indestructible until end of turn, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn. And that's the, the deck tech for Ring the Seri, guys. Uh, some other cards that I, I'm really on the fence about, and honestly, if you want to put these cards in, then absolutely go for it. The first one is Coat of Arms. It's an artifact that gives your creatures plus one, plus one for each other creature that serves a creature type with it. This also includes your opponent's creatures, um, so it can get a little bit messy. I don't know if I love it, but it can definitely be very powerful. Metallic Mimic is too generic for a shapeshifter. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type and all other creatures of that chosen type enter with a plus one plus one counter. This one I'm on the fence on because since we have two different tribes in this deck, it's hard to, to know how much tribal synergy we should put into the deck since we have two different tribes. So I elected to, to leave out more tribal pump effects and put in more win conditions. Obelisk of Erd is a six mana artifact with Convoke and you choose a creature type and those creatures get plus two plus two. Collective Blessing, which is three green, green, white for an enchantment creatures you control get plus three, plus three. Anyway, guys, that is the deck tech for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm really excited to be playing this deck actually on our next episode of Duel of the Peaks to really represent my love for animals. So please join us for that gameplay and leave a comment on this video about what you think about this deck, what you think could make it better, what do you think about the cuts that I made, and overall just how we're doing. Really appreciate everybody who subscribed and a reminder to please subscribe to this channel. We thank you so much for your support and we look forward to seeing you on our next video. Thanks, everybody.